name again. Hello, I am Mariah, manager of Tidewater Technology. Allow my colleagues to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Jacob, head of technology. I'm Shayla, GIS lead. I'm Tavon Wheeler, wildlife specialist. I'm Tyler Gibson, I'm the agricultural advisor. At Tidewater Technology, we help landowners incorporate proven technology and techniques to improve crop yields, as well as promote biodiversity while maintaining water quality and increasing soil health. For the purposes of our presentation, we invite you to follow along in the portfolios beginning on page two. For the past two years, we've been working with William Johnson, a second generation farmer to manage Emerson Farm, <clears throat> primarily farming a sort soy wheat corn rotation, and his son, Caleb Johnson, is a third generation farmer and is becoming more involved and is interested in incorporating technology into Emerson Farm. We will work with the entire Johnson family to create a management plan that will improve their crop growth and yields while increasing their wildlife habitat and their forest stands and improve their water quality and quantity. We here at Tidal Technology will be defining technology as the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes. In order to meet the goals of the Emerson Farm, we have broken down our technology recommendations into three main categories. First, technology used to image and monitor the farm. Second, technology used in crop farming. And third, technology used to maintain and enhance habitat for bobwhite quail, native pollinators, and other wildlife. Before recommending that the Johnsons make any major changes to Emerson Farm, we will review historical soil data, available for free online. Two resources, the USDA Web Soil Survey and the USGS Topo View, provide Essex County land surveys. The NRCS Geospatial Data Gateway provides soil-focused geodatabases for use with ArcMap or other compatible geographic information systems. Because these resources are somewhat outdated and we are working at a smaller scale than their original intended use, we will resample the soils at Emerson Farm to verify. Take these on the first several pages of your portfolios. Although Emerson Farm has about 220 acres currently in cultivation, we recommend taking one new soil sample per acre. On a larger scale, this would be impractical, but as a smaller farm looking to embrace technology and make informed decisions, we are first and foremost striving for accuracy. Each soil sample will be sent to Virginia Tech Soil Testing Laboratory, where a routine soil test is performed for free. This data will allow us to update our existing soil map and use the soil analyses for fertilizer recommendations for the Johnson's intended crops. We looked into irrigating crops grown on Emerson Farm through groundwater or surface water withdrawals. However, surface salinity maps provided by the Chesapeake Bay Program, as seen on page 6 of your portfolios, shows that surface water is too salty for use, and withdrawing groundwater can create a severe saltwater wedge. Fortunately, historical climate data provided through the Geospatial Data Gateway shows sufficient rainfall for crops grown on Emerson Farm. To protect against years in which rainfall amounts affect crop production, we will urge the Johnson family to purchase crop insurance to minimize the monetary losses. This slope map, seen on page 8 of your portfolios, was generated using the LIDAR, or Light Detection and Ranging, data set for Essex County, available for free through the Data Gateway, and gives us a more detailed, accurate, and up-to-date version of the topo. Darker areas have steeper slopes, areas of primary concern for erosion. We also created this color-corrected hillshade map, seen on page 9, to show the elevation and direction of slopes on Emerson Farm, to guide the Johnson's ability to contour crops to minimize environmental disturbances. We can also compare the Togo map, last updated in the early 1970s, with the more recent LIDAR data to identify areas that have experienced significant change in the last several decades, such as the forest land on the side farm. In addition, this paleo channel, seen clearly on the hillshade map, running through this central field, which, which is an area filled with younger sediment, will collect, will collect water during periods of heavy rainfall, and will be an ideal location to include a grass waterway. Although we will seek to minimize chemical usage and lessen its impact to recover crops, we can determine areas where an increased riparian buffer would be best to minimize chem chemical contaminants and other pollutants heading downslope. This is especially important as improving and implementing best management practices will help meet the Johnson family's goals for improving their farm's water quality and quantity. Mapping technology will make Emerson Farm more sustainable by allowing us to see exactly what impacts we are having on the land, where areas of risk are, and how to provide a management solution that minimizes environmental impacts. By using publicly available technology resources to access imagery data to monitor the farm, we are able to make informed land use recommendations and develop an accurate nutrient management plan to address soil health and increase crop yields, and increase crop yields while increasing overall productivity while decreasing both nutrient and monetary loss. All of this mapping and monitoring technology comes from websites and services that are free or are free to use alternatives. 
Did free technology offer the immediate benefit without any monetary investment? After examining the current and historical conditions of the Johnson property, <coughs> who worked to improve the farming techniques and technology used on Emerson Farm that would best integrate the current fields and equipment in use today? Soils hold 70% of the planet's land-based carbon, and properly managed soils can double the capacity to store carbon. The Johnson family is interested in increasing their soil health. Therefore, we will focus on technology that can reduce soil erosion and compaction while increasing soil organic matter and crop yields. Please flip to pages 10 and 11, and let's talk gadgets. No-till drills, rate fertilizers, yield monitors, and crop rollers. These are all important aspects of precision, precision agriculture, using information technology to, technology to maintain maximum health and productivity while responding to natural variability. First, the Johnsons will need to purchase a GPS package for their tractor if they didn't already have one to precisely track the location of equipment and generate data for analysis. Conventional tillage negatively impacts the land by increasing erosion and the loss of soil fauna, lowering productivity rates. No-till drills decrease these harmful effects by minimizing the soil disturbance by making small initials plant the seed rather than moving or displacing large amounts of soil. No-till drills maintain the soil structure and decreases the erosion while in <clears throat> decreases erosion while increasing carbon sequestration, improving crop growth and yields. Research done by, I by Iowa and Oregon State Universities showed that drilling seeds provided an optimal seed soil contact in the form of temperature, moisture, and an oxygen. <clears throat> Farmer that we spoke to also mentioned the benefit of decreased loss of seed due to birds and rodents. And while and decreasing the monetary loss of the poor utilization of land, which is an important aspect of precision agriculture. While the Johnsons could run a no-till drill from Three Rivers, um, <clears throat> Three Rivers Soil and Water Conservation District, it would be more cost-effective for them to purchase the rent for $2,900. In addition to the no-till drill, we recommend the Johnsons purchase the Bayover Rate Fertilizer Applicator, or BRF. Run by a computer program installed in Tracticam, a VRF applicator adjusts fertilizer application rates based on the tractor's track GPS location and the soil testing results and fertilizer recommendations from Virginia Tech, delivering precise nutrient coverage with the crop seed at most. This device will cost the junction roughly $3,000, but will pay for itself by minimizing chemical runoff while by decreasing the unnecessary fertilizer application while still providing boost to crops exactly where they need it. In order to verify the results of Emerson Farm, we'll install an $1,800 yield monitor on the combine harvester to calculate crop yield as the Johnson's harvester fields. As a component of precision agriculture, the yield monitor can be coupled with the GPS package, sharing precise data and pinpoint which areas have greater production and which areas have room for improvement. We also created these projected crop yield maps using the non-irrigated fields and mapping it com component report generated by the USDA, found on pages 12 and 13 of your portfolios. As new crops are harvested, the yield monitor will generate new maps. And this data, combined with the GPS and soil data, can help us identify specific areas where fertilizer or seed application rates can be adjusted, allowing the Johnsons to be more precise, less wasteful, and make the most of their crop. Another piece of technology we recommend is a crimper roller, seen on page 14. A crimper roller passes over a cover crop, such as vetch or rapeseed, breaking the stems while holding the plant in place. The damaged and dying cover crop forms a thick weed-preventing thatch, beneficial for reducing the use of herbicides. Desired cash crops, seeded with a no-till drill, germinate protected by the thatch with increased moisture control, increased erosion control, and reduced use of herbicides. The increased water and moisture retention is critical as 80% of water used for agriculture is green water held in the soil. The increased biomass from rolled crops also builds soil depth, structure, and nutrients while sequestering carbon, protecting soil, and preventing erosion. How will the application of scientific knowledge of cover cropping and technological gadgets make Emerson Farm more sustainable? According to the USDA's Sustainable Agriculture and Research Education Program, or SARE, sustainability is maintaining a healthy and productive agri-system, while increasing the stewardship of land, air, and water, as well as the quality of life of farmers and their communities. The total investment in these technologies will cost up to $9,000, as seen on page 17 of your portfolios. Despite the initial cost, the Johnson will realize benefits immediately by applying seed, fertilizers, and chemicals more precisely to their fields. Each piece of technology incre increases the driving economy and will, ultimately ha and will ultimately have the number of times the tractor passes over the field, saving farmer Johnson time, saving money on fuel consumption, and decreasing soil compaction. Combined with increased crop yields, increasing soil health, and, de and a decrease in soil loss, 
we predict that the Johnsons will see a return on investment in less than three years. The cover crops addressed on page 18. Our plan is designed to protect, <coughs> to protect, preserve, and rehabilitate top rehabilitate topsoil during transition periods with bare soil exposed. It is eroded of its nutrients and its structure. According to North Carolina Cooperative Extension, the use of cover crops reduced erosion by 62 percent. Cover crops also insulate the soil and keep it active. So while there may be an initial delay in emergence of young crops, they will often catch up and surpass crops planted in conventionally planted fields. Besides functioning as cover, we recommend lagoon cover crops such as red clover and vetch to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and store it in a soil in usable form, benefiting the next crop and reducing the need for chemical fertilizers. In the no, pardon me. <laughs> Replacing synthetic nitrogen fertilizers with biological nitrogen fixation by legumes can reduce CO2 emissions from agricultural production by half. Cover crops are not always harvested for profit, but they are valuable for the services they provide to future crops and to the soil. One harvestable cover crop we recommend the Johnson's plant is high erucic acid rapeseed, or here. Using pharmaceuticals and plastics, rapeseed is a versatile cover crop, can be planted in both winter and summer. With a fibrous root system, it aids in nutrient capture, soil retention, and erosion control. With numerous flowers, rapeseed encourages native pollinators, including bees, offering nectar and pollen, prom pollen promoting healthy and productive hives. Rapeseed can also tolerate saline soils and a wide pH range, making it a less risky option along the brackish Rappahannock. Rapeseed is also a brassica and has been shown by the Society of Nematologists and other groups to suppress both parasitic nematodes and weeds in crop fields. Biological control is an important part of integrated pest management, reducing the need and cost for chemical control. After being harvested just under the height of the seed pods, rapeseed stalks can be crushed by the crimper roller to provide additional weed suppression for the next crop. And finally, local contracts from Purdue Farms are available that include shipping and transport arrangements, lowering fuel costs. There are a multitude of other, other cover crops that could be planted, including legumes like red clover or specialty crop like malted barley, highly, highly valued for their expanding microbrewery industry. We will reach out to the Essex County Cooperative, Cooperative Extension to make the best choices for Emerson Farms crop rotation. Regardless, cover crops are valued for their erosion protection, soil building, and increase in soil nutrients and carbon sequestration all increasing the sustainability of Emerson Farm. While we continue to recommend farming crops at Emerson Farm, we also recommend several land use changes and enhancements to increase wildlife habitat on the farm, seen on page 20, as the Johnson family is interested in establishing the quail habitat originally maintained by Grandfather Johnson. As a goal for Emerson Farm, we recommend technology, the scientific application knowledge that will improve quail habitat on the farm, such as establishment of hedgerows, conversion of fields, forest management, and edge building. We will establish hedgerows, shrubs, and trees to form a border along pre existing roads present on the property. These hedgerows will act as cover for quail, dove, and turkey, provide habitat for native pollinators, and act as safe corridors to connect suitable habitat. These hedgerows will benefit cropland by reducing the impact of wind on their crops and those fields around Emerson Farms, as well as capturing wind blown weed seeds before they can settle into production fields, greatly reducing the need for additional herbicides. In the U.S., natural pest control services have been estimated to save 13.6 billion per year in agricultural crops, and this, bio and this habitat will act as the biological control aspect of integrated pest management by supporting a variety of birds and beneficial insects, including wasps and predatory beetles, which will decrease any pests that pose a threat to crops. After evaluating our improved soil mass and projected crop yields, we have determined that these parcels of Emerson Farm would be better suited to wildlife habitat. Because their slopes are generally too steep, they have their soil types are generally unsuitable for crops. Their risk of ponding or flooding will have poor pH of salinity. The conversion of fields may seem counterproductive to increasing profits. However, increased populations of native pollinators and beneficial insects can increase crop yields on remaining fields. To convert these parcels into prime quail habitat, we will use a prescribed burn along with fescue to eliminate, along with glyphosate. I'm sorry, um, to eliminate fescue and other undesirable plants. We will then lightly disgate to promote native plants present in the seed bank. Hedgerows will provide quilt cover, and furthermore, the habitat conservation areas are close to forested areas and fields, increasing connected cover and habitat. We will encourage the Johnson family to participate in CP33 of the Continuous Conservation Wildlife Reserve Program, or CRP. CP33 is a cost share program that aims to establish wildlife habitat, specifically for the bobwhite quail and other upland birds, for the establishment of native grass buffers. By planting native grass buffers, especially in this portion of field number two, 
The crop form will transition through succession of plants and heights to create edge mimic and habitat for many wildlife species. We will reach out with the Department of Forestry to evaluate the trees and hear the recommendations for the forests that are currently at Emerson Farm. We will also encourage the Johnsons to look into the Forestry Coil Habitat Recovery Cost Share program with the DOF and the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries to make the most of the land near the salt marsh. Technology. The scientific application of knowledge allows farmers to make smart decisions regarding land use, converting poor cropland, edge feathering, forest management, and establishment of wildlife habitat will pay for itself through incentives, cost shares, and by increasing game birds the Johnson family can enjoy. Improving habitat for quail also increases the sustainability of Emerson Farm, because habitat that benefits quail also benefits native pollinators and beneficial insects. Throughout this presentation, we have specifically recommended technologies that benefit these insects. First, when the Johnsons use their crimper roller, native bee nests in the soil are minimally disturbed. While many crops do not require bees for pollination, others can benefit, and our choice of cover crop, grapeseed, is both beneficial to and benefited by native bee populations. Field conversion, edge feathering, and hedgerows will all increase the populations of native pollinators and beneficial insects, and data from the Xerces Society shows that these areas will pay for themselves in five to ten years, simply through the benefits received from increased pollination, not to mention the, the increase in sustainability from utilizing integrated pest management. Not only will the benefits be seen at Emerson Farm, but native pollinators can travel two to five miles, and their benefits will be seen on neighboring farms. Using technology, the scientific application of knowledge should be a part of every landowner's playbook. With help from local conservation districts, R uh, NRCS, Cooperative Extension, and other local, state, and federal agencies, landowners and farmers can get information about methods and techniques that really work. To help others reach the same goals, we recommend that the Johnsons become involved with cooperative extension field day tours and farm visits so that other local farmers and students can come see and learn the benefits at Emerson Farm. We will meet the Johnsons family's goals for Emerson Farm. To incorporate technology into farm management and conservation that will maintain or improve soil health, increase water quality and quantity, increase wildlife habitat and land health, while increasing crop yields and profits. By using freely available mapping technology, we will monitor soils and land use to make educated management and planting decisions. By incorporating precision agriculture, the Johnsons will minimize their environmental impacts while maximizing their profits. By planting cover crops and using a curb road, the Johnsons will increase carbon sequestration and moisture retention while decreasing the use and cost of all chemical inputs. By establishing and maintaining a wildlife habitat, the Johnsons will see a return of bobwhite quail, native pollinators, and beneficial insects to Emerson Farm. Thank you. We at Tidewater Technology appreciate your time, and we now open the floor to any questions you may have.